One day at David's, take one. Hello, so tell Hello. me a little bit about yourself. What's your name? What was your occupation before you retired? My name's Dave Eisenbeis. I'm a retired television director and camera operator. Tell me a little bit more about that. Like, what does that mean for, for the people that are like, I'm five years old and I'm not on YouTube? <laughs> Do you want to know about the years when I was uh, shooting uh, uh, situ uh, situation comedies. Yeah, for sure. So, okay. what, what is that? So, a situation comedy is is basically a, a situation that somebody has has set up, and it's a half hour comedy that's based on that idea. Uh, we were shooting in a television soundstage in Hollywood. Uh, at the time, we were shooting probably shooting eight of the nation's most popular television shows at that time, mm. and uh, this was during the 1970s. Mm. So I was working there for a period of just about 10 years. And so a situation comedy um, uh, it shoots with a, 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 a crew of about 30 people, mm -hmm. plus the actors. Mm -hmm. um, a typical week would start, the actors would start on what's called a rehearsal stage. And they would have the walls marked out with tape on the floor and they'd have all their furniture laid out and they would block and rehearse the show. And then, let's say on a Thursday, uh, they would move everything into the soundstage um, and they would bring in a crew and we would block uh, the, the shots. And uh, so we'd rehearse all day and then the following day, we'd, uh, we'd record the show. So you'd come in the following day about one o'clock in the afternoon You'd rehearse the show twice, and then you'd bring in an audience and shoot the show. Then you'd mm. go to dinner, you'd come back, they'd bring in another audience and shoot the show again. So and it's live? It was shot as live, mm. and then it would be, we recorded it on four videotape machines, and mm. they would combine the dress rehearsal and the show together to make a half-hour show. Awesome. So what shows did you work on? Well, these were classics in the 1970s. You're probably too young to remember shows like All in the Family, Jefferson's, Maud, One Day at a Time, Three's Company, shows like that. Kind of throwing um, everyone you've ever worked with uh, under the bus in this next question, so have fun with that. But what was your favorite show to work on? Um, probably the favorite show to, to work on was a show called Maud. Mm. Um, it was a, the actress was Beatrice Arthur mm. and she played a very gruff kind of angry uh, know-it-all kind of mm. character but offset off camera she was she was very quiet and reserved mm. she was a Broadway actress to begin with and she was just absolutely superb the interesting thing about situation comedies is that um, all of these actors knew every line they, mm. they mm -hmm. memorized a complete script every week. Mm. There were no cue cards, and they, they remembered the entire show word for word. Wow. They couldn't ad-lib. In the years after Hollywood, uh, I spent a lot of time shooting commercials, mm -hmm. uh, uh, marketing pieces for, for mm -hmm. large companies. We traveled all over the country, a lot of locations around the world. And I primarily would shoot and direct mm -hmm. uh, all of those things. In Hollywood, I didn't direct. Mm -hmm. I was a technical director and a camera operator on, mm -hmm. on all of those shows. In later years, directing and, and camera. <clears throat> Tell a funny story. Like, really, a funny story? Yeah, a funny story. Ah. <clears throat> we were doing a show called One Day at a Time. Mm -hmm. And this was the last show of the season. And uh, the associate, so in a control room, there was the technical director, which was me, the mm -hmm. director, the associate director, and a production assistant, mm -hmm. all in a line. I actually have a, a photograph of that. that so the cool. associate director and I decided to pull a prank on the director. Uh -huh. And so the, we had our scripts, and the, the whole script was laid out, and every shot was listed on that script. And so it was all extremely detailed, and you couldn't do the show without the script. Oh, no. And so we decided to get in a fight. And, and so I had all my script pages out of the binder, 
and I called down to the to the uh, tape room and, and had him roll the tapes. The full audience is there. We rolled tape for the show, and he and I got into this argument. And so I fake. ended up the fake argument, and we're yelling at each other. And finally, I picked up the pages of the script and threw them at him. And so all the pages went all over the control room, and the director kind of had a panic attack. He had a panic attack. Yeah, and then it, he realized that it was all a joke. So. I don't really know what this question is. You asked me to ask you about the Carpenters story. Ah, we used to shoot, there was a singing group called the Carpenters, mm -hmm. and we shot for about three Christmases, we shot specials, so it would take a week to shoot a 60-minute television special for the networks. So, in, in this case, uh, Richard Carpenter always used to travel with his own grand piano. Mm -hmm. And we, there was a, an amazing shot where you had a full orchestra on the sound stage, and Richard was, was situated in the middle of the orchestra. And the shot was, I was on a crane camera, on, seated on, a, on an arm yeah. with the camera. And, and so the shot was, I would come down out of the ceiling mm -hmm. on this crane, <laughs> And then fly and like fly around the end of his piano and end up shooting at his at his a close up his of his fingers. You were like Alphaba. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we rehearsed this and it it worked perfectly. And with a crane, you've got a driver and you have an arm man and you have the camera operator. And I was the camera operator. So everybody had marks. You had to hit the marks in order to make the shot. Mm -hmm. So we started with the orchestra, and I came down out of the attic and, and came around the end of the, of the piano and onto the fingers. So we rehearsed that perfectly, and then when we rolled tape the first time, we actually hit the end of the piano. The limbs hit the end of the piano, and I went into the distance, and, and I had no idea what happened, but the arm man had missed his mark. Oh, so yeah. we tried it again, hit the piano again. But the third time it worked perfectly, and uh, it was an incredible was shot. Charm, I guess. So Literally, then we yeah. went to dinner, and when we came back from dinner, the property master had hung a target on the end of Richard Carpenter's piano. Um, tell me a little bit about Karen Carpenter. Uh, Karen Carpenter was a, an amazingly gifted uh, vocal artist. She was incredible, but she struggled with bulimia, mm. and uh, ultimately it killed her. <clears throat> so it was, it was a very tragic story. On One Day at a Time, there was an actress, a young actor, actress by the name of Mackenzie Phillips. Mm. And Mackenzie had a huge drug problem. Mm. And uh, she, she was an incredibly brilliant actress, but drugs nearly killed her. And so there would be all kinds of problems on the set, and we ended up having to work hours and hours and hours and hours of overtime. We'll go at the very beginning. Tell me the head story. The head story. One of my first jobs as a television cameraman, before I really understood what the business was all about, uh, chief engineer asked me if I was available on a Sunday to work, and I said, sure. And he said, well, sh meet me on the seventh floor of the UCLA Medical Center mm -hmm. in the anatomy lab. That should have been the clue, but it wasn't. So I showed up and we set up all of our equipment and a fellow came in uh, wearing a lab coat and he had a dish pan with a towel over the top and he put it on the table and he pulled the towel back and there were two human heads, two human heads in the dish pan. And so he, and the, the name of the conference that day was nasal reconstruction. And so he picked up the, the male head, put it over on a, on the table and it stood on its neck. Then he picked up the female head, put her on the table, but she fell over. Aww. So he picked her up by the ears and went wham, 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 and then she stood up. Like her organs back inside of her head? Well, her neck wasn't quite flat, so he flattened her neck out by kind of banging her on the table. Do you remember his name? No. <laughs> no. If that's you, I'm so sorry to the poor man that... <laughs> well, I mean, if that was his job, he must have, like, found some sick enjoyment. In... The lab technician? Yeah. Some, like, well, he didn't think anything about it, because it's just the anatomy lab, and you just do whatever you have you to do. You just jam a human head onto the... 
Yeah. Going to the yeah. table. <laughs> if she falls over, if she you falls do, over, yeah. you have to. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. Philosophies of life. And, and then later on, he said, "Would you like to go into the lab?" And I said, "Oh yes, I'd like that." So he took me into the lab, and there were all kinds of gurneys. And on one lab, there would on one table there would be legs. On another table, there would be arms. On another table would be all torsos. Anatomy lab at UCLA. I will not be visiting. <laughs> You said you wanted a career in television. Yeah, I won't be visiting the anatomy lab. Why not? On the seventh floor of UCLA. It's very interesting. See, that was one of the really interesting things about a career in television. I got to see all kinds of interesting yeah, industries. Interesting things, yeah. Fantastic. We got to see how airplanes were built. We got to we got to shoot open heart surgeries. We got to shoot. Uh, inside paper mills, uh, paper mill? steel mills, and paper where they where they manufacture paper out of trees. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so we got into some amazingly interesting buildings and interesting industries. A lot of fun. It beat working for a living, <laughs> but somebody had to do it. Somebody had to. Somebody had to do it. So why not me? Mm -hmm. But it was really nice to talk to you. Thank you for thank you for meeting with me today. I enjoyed meeting with you, Jillian. I enjoyed meeting with you, Grandpa. Oh, yes. That you're our pet. <laughs> Whoa! Segway. Who knew? <laughs> Them now. Them now. Them Everybody now. knows Everyone now. in the world. Everybody knows. Everybody now. in the world. That's right. Everyone in the world and their mother and their pet cats. That's right. And their snakes. And in some cases, birds. So true, yeah. The, like the yeah. crap on microphones. Yeah. <laughs>